Hi, I'm Tamara, and this is Telus Talks with Tamara Taggart. Hi, everyone. Today, I'm welcoming Dr. Shimmy Kang. She's a Harvard-educated psychiatrist, scientist, speaker, and multi-book author. But today, we're talking about her best-selling book, The Tech Solution, Creating Healthy Habits for Kids in Our Digital World. It's a great conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, Shimmy. It's great to see you. Thanks, Tamara. So excited to be here. So we're going to talk about your book, The Tech Solution. And I know that, uh, well, every parent I know has read this book. Uh, You wrote this book in 2020. Just, you know, things were, I think things changed for us with electronics over the last three years. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Um, You know, the book was based on the research um, since like the iPhone came out. And then uh, you're right, the pandemic, uh, really changed our relationships to a point uh, with technology. It accelerated um, in so many ways, including, of course, online learning and remote work. Uh, So now we're in this new phase. um, And so I'll definitely be updating it soon. Yeah, yeah, I know. I well, that's the thing when when you're, you're working in the tech world or analyzing the tech world, it changes every single day. Um, Let's talk about kids and technology and electronics and uh, social media and all of that and and our mental health or our our kids and their mental health. What is it like to grow up today in a digital world? Yeah, well, I think the best person are the young people because, you know, they have, you know, they're what's called digital natives. Um, They've been wired from the crib. Technology is like air to them. Uh, And that's really important because that's very different than how we grew up. Um, We are called digital immigrants. Um, We learned it later in life. And so right away, you have a mismatch between our intuitive knowledge, our lived experience as parents and teachers and caregivers and this generation. Um, So I think that's super important. And the generation gap has never been bigger, um, partly because of tech. Um, You know, we have to ask our kids how to use our phones or TV remotes. Um, And that actually changes the dynamics, the um, power differential uh, a little bit, um, as opposed to previous generations. So it's a very interesting moment in time. Um, I think the use of tech and how we are using it instead of how it's using us is one of the most important issues in general and definitely in parenting today. So the U.S. Surgeon General, uh, he he just wrote something, Dr. Murthy, about social media and mental health. Uh, We're in a crisis. Uh, It's only going to get worse unless we we do something about it. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do want to say it's very important not to villainize tech because we're going to talk a lot about the negative impact of tech. Um, And I opened the tech solution book with this concept of fire. And I said, we are a pivotal, we are in a pivotal point in human history, just like our ancestors at one point harnessed the power of fire. Those that did it well went further and farther than ever before. And those that didn't got burnt and burnt down the village. Uh, We are at the same place with tech. We need to teach our kids healthy tech. Um, We need to have robust learning in AI and robotics and coding. But we have to be very careful about the negative impact, which is what Dr. Murthy was talking about, just one um, uh, on our minds, our bodies and society. So, you know, his article really highlighted social media um, and the young brain. And I think that there's very unique aspects to that combination. Um, You know, the young brain is very sensitive to peer admiration. Um, It wants to have risk taking. It wants what we call novelty seeking. It's an underdeveloped brain that lacks um, neurologically uh, impulse control, planning, execution. Anybody with teenagers or kids know this. Um, And they're constantly interacting with devices that have the most sophisticated manipulation of neuroscience, dopamine pathways to keep them connected and um, addicted, to be honest. Not that they wanted the industry wanted to ruin a generation. The industry, like every industry, the tech industry wanted to sell their products and they found a way to do it. And we're all actually at risk, but young people in particular, those under the age of 25, I would say. 
So is you you said something there about having a, you know, a healthy relationship with tech or a healthy relationship with social media or whatever. It's so I find that really interesting because there's so many adults that don't have a healthy relationship and we're all trying to figure it out. You said that, you know, we're digital immigrants. Yeah. So we're all trying to figure it out and here our kids are whipping through it and how can we as adults who might not have a healthy relationship, right? How can we know what's right for our kids if we don't even know what's right for us? Right. Yeah, that's such a vexing question. Um, And that really is what led to the tech solution book, because my first book was called The Dolphin Parent, and it was a parenting book. And I was speaking all over the world about self-motivated kids and health and And one of the number one questions was that question, how do we manage this issue? And I couldn't find um, an answer initially. Uh, People were asking about how many hours a day. And and then I realized um, in communication, we need to fall back on a metaphor that's familiar to us. So for parenting, it was the dolphin. For tech, it's what I call the tech diet. So we all understand food. We all understand that the food we consume minute to minute impacts our physical health, our mental health, our social uh, well-being. And the same is true for tech. What we consume um, impacts us. So if we get back to social media, five minutes of, let's say, Instagram could be what I call toxic tech. It could be stressful. It could be comparing your life to others. It could be fear of missing out. It could be hate, toxicity, bullying. Five minutes of Instagram could be what I call junk food tech. Um, The empty calories, a little bit of junk food won't kill you, but mindless scrolling, not really engaging, just kind of zoning out is like eating a bag of chips, a little bit's okay, not too much. And five minutes of Instagram could be really healthy. You could be connecting with community. You could be uh, forming positive relationships. You could be doing something creative and learning like a masterclass. So we got to get beyond the time. We got to get beyond the platforms and really understand this concept of consumption and the impact it's having on our minds and bodies. Ah, that makes sense. You know, when you break it down like that, because I find and I know I'm not alone. I'm not the only parent that, you know, I, I feel I feel kind of ragey when (laughs) You know, we we all get home from school and everybody dumps off their bags. And the first thing they do is grab an iPad, grab a, you know, get on their laptop, get whatever it might be. Right. And it, it always made me feel well, it still does make me feel angry. And so I was thinking about it the other day. Why does it make me feel so angry? Because it feels empty to me. It feels like, you know, I don't know. It just and it's not that. I, what I realized for me, it's, it's not what you're doing. It's what you're looking at. It's what you're, how you're spending this time, which is really what you're talking about. Like, I don't like seeing the thumb scrolling up because I know you're watching TikTok and I don't find any value in that. But it's yeah. really hard. This is hard, Jimmy. It's not easy. It's hard. Yeah, Tamara, I, and I totally agree. I have three kids. They're all teenagers now. Um, I get that anger. And the therapist in me, the psychiatrist in me, uh, knows deep down what is underneath that anger is fear. Um, and what I'm scared of is what we intuitively know as parents and adults when we see these behaviors. It's not Um, it's not okay for our kids to be sitting, looking at screens all day, not moving their bodies, not being in nature, not socializing. And the science is very clear. Um, Technology use is linked, not causing, but linked to a whole list of issues like anxiety, depression, body image issues, addiction, obesity, uh, sedentary behavior, lack of empathy, lack of social skills, um, a... um, crisis now. We're seeing um, new research on blue light and diabetes and heart disease, a dysregulation of our most fundamental biological rhythms. Um, So, you know, we know this in our hearts because we did not like this and we knew what felt good. And so I think that explains this collective angst uh, we have as parents and teachers and people who work with young people 
you know, when we go to a soccer pitch, when we go to a mall, when we go to a restaurant, um, yes. and babies are looking at their phones and getting the diaper change. And I know it makes it really easy to change a diaper, but that dance that we have, that facial expression, that engagement, that's what's called neurogenesis. Um, and these are just pivotal to our, our human health and well-being. It's interesting because in a in a lot of ways, we know so much more now, right? We have the science to back up uh, what happens and our mental health. And I think I think maybe we're probably better at identifying um, mental health challenges in, in children than we were, say, 30, 40, 50 years ago, right? We know all this information, yet I feel... I feel like in a lot of ways, social media, right? Because I think for a lot of parents, it's not the, it's not so much the talking to your friends on the phone that's the problem, or texting your friends, or being in a chat group with your friends. That's not the problem. The problem is the mindless scrolling, and we we all seem to do it. Yeah. And and so, you know, I'll be I drive by a bus stop, you know, on the way home from school and there's 30 people in line at the bus stop. And I say to the kids, look at everybody in line. And every single person is looking at their phone and just scrolling. And they said, yeah. And I said, I just find it interesting because no one looks around anymore. Like we're all walking around with our heads down. Yeah. And that ties into the article you mentioned, um, you know, the Number one health epidemic of the 21st century, um, and I worked in Geneva, Switzerland at the World Health on this research. It was released in the 90s, um, and it was stress. So the number one health epidemic of the 21st century is stress. The next major health epidemic coming from the WHO is predicted to be loneliness. Okay. Now, I'm going to explain how tech connects with both of them. So that scrolling that you mentioned, our brains um, can't cope with thousands of images a day. Um, and we're constantly trying to make sense of it all, just scrolling or multitasking, which is a myth, we can't do it, releases cortisol from our bodies. It's a stress response because our nervous system asks us, why are you not focused? Is there a hurricane? Is there a predator? And it'll fire cortisol. The second health epidemic of loneliness is to your point, we need to look at each other. We need to see each other's faces. Um, the research is so profound that after the iPhone came out, within eight years, it hit 50% uh, saturation in households. Um, that was very quick disruption of our lifestyles. Um, the TV, for example, it took 35 years. So very quickly, it hit us. We had this promise. But within that eight years, we're no longer having dinner together. We're no longer um, having those interactions. So uh, this is a, like I said, you know, the biggest issue of our time and, and the loneliness, the connection piece, I cannot overemphasize um, because uh, socializing and social status and social media are not social bonding. And what we need is that bonding. Oh, yes, exactly. So I think about when we were kids, right, and how we communicated with our friends. Somebody would call the house. There was no answering machine. There was no, there was none of that, right? Oh my gosh, I sound so, I, I feel like I'm my grandma talking to me when I was a kid, right? When I talked to my kids. But now they communicate uh, on messages in Snapchat or Discord or all these things. And I really do try to have, you know, open conversations and there's, we all know each other's passwords and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot, you mentioned fear of missing out, right, FOMO, and that is a big thing, isn't it, for kids? Yeah, so I mentioned the human brain is not fully myelinated or developed uh, till around 25, here's my brain, um, and young people are really developing this part, it's called the cortex. So this is that planning, thinking, executive function piece, and um, their, their emotional brain is kind of more the stronger brain at the time. Now, it makes perfect sense that teenagers way back uh, when we were hunter gatherers and we only lived till 30 or, you know, whatever our age span was, teenagers were meant to do three things. They were meant to bond and connect and procreate so they could um, continue humanity. They were meant to take risks um, and try new things because they had to explore and find new, um, new areas. So 
that's what the teenage brain is all about. Um, and if we're not getting kids to take risks, try new things and socialize in person through really important things like extracurriculars, art, sports, um, you know, camps, programs, nature, all of this stuff that satisfies those three things, they're taking that online um, and they are posting selfies and doing Tide Pod challenges, eating laundry detergent and getting themselves into emergency rooms in trouble because they're trying to satisfy their own neurobiology. Um, and that fear of missing out, we know, lights up areas of the brain. Um, when you feel excluded or mis left out, it lights up the same area as fear and starvation. It is that important for us to feel a sense of belonging and connection. And the young brain can't handle, um, has a really hard time with seeing images of their friends together um, where they may not be. And I do want to say, like in the pandemic, um, we did also see cyberbullying go up um, and uh, the the influencers, um, and I, I don't want to give oxygen to the negative ones, but there's one in particular who spreads misogyny and hate against women who has billions of views, billions of views. So we also have to recognize that um, it's not just scrolling. It's a direct influence of narratives and stories that our kids have access to that we wouldn't want them perhaps to have access to. Um, and the first contact with AI, which was social media algorithms, was called a race to the bottom of the brainstem. That meant it was trying to get people's attention and keep them there. This next contact with AI, like ChatGBT is being embedded in all the social media, is called a race to intimacy. And what that means is um, if I were to look at Snapchat, my daughter Gia, let's say she's 13 years old, if she had a Snapchat, she would have an AI bot. She can name that bot Nelly. Nelly would ask her, how was your volleyball game? What happened in school? And would communicate with my my kids in a voice, in a manner that they predictably would want to hear and love based on their, their history. So we're heading into a whole new place with social media. Um, and I don't think we're prepared because we haven't even, even figured out our first um, contact uh, with AI and algorithms yet. Do you think that, um, you know, there's a lot on parents, right? There's a lot on parents to, um, you know, we, we our, our jobs are to keep our kids safe and happy and healthy. And and um, and so this could easily go sideways with social media. If not, you know, you have to be aware and and on it like you would with any other you know, sending your kid out into the world in any way, shape or form. Do you think that it should only be on parents? Do you think that parent, this is a parent's job to figure it out for their kid? I think we need all community. Um, and I think, again, I go back to a rare, very good example of sugar and the diet um, in the food industry, right? So um, it's tough for parents to regulate sugar, right? It's so hard to feed your kids, but we have to try. We have to start early. We have to be repetitive. We have to role model. We have to, we have to do all of that for nutrition because it's embedded in our culture, um, the dopamine-driven foods, right? The sugar. It's the same with tech. We have to start early. We have to be repetitive as parents. We have to role model. And like the food industry, we have to build allies. So the school system now, has taken out vending machines with sugar uh, and Coke and soda cans. Um, we, we need the school system to have um, limits on cell phones in public areas, social areas, and in lunchrooms. That's what the um, Academy of Pediatrics is calling for, no screens in mealtime and social areas. So that's lunchrooms, cafeterias, and hallways in the schools. Uh, I'm all for very robust, powerful tech in the classrooms. Uh, like I said, coding, AI, um, we have digital design, um, but we can get rid of the junk tech outside of the classrooms. Um, and yes, we also need regulations. Uh, we need government. We need family doctors screening for addictions, um, video game addiction and internet addiction. Uh, we need pediatricians. So just like how it took us 50 years to wake up, um, to the obesity and diabetes epidemic. And in the United States, 
Um, it's the first generation destined to not outlive the one that came before them. And this data is in Canada too now. And it's a combination of a very unhealthy lifestyle um, that took us too long to figure out. But now we can use that familiar model and do take action a lot sooner. Yeah, we can't wait 50 years for sure. Um, I, I just want to mention that we like to give back um, by uh, thanking our guests to for being here. And we asked them to choose a Canadian nonprofit that we can give $500 to uh, in your name, Shimmy. And you chose Science World. So thank you very much for choosing them, Science World in Vancouver. And we will give them $500 as a thank you. Thank you. And I, I'm so passionate about science. Um, I know. I feel it holds the answers um, uh, to a lot of uh, a lot of the things we're dealing with right now, and they do such a good job. Absolutely, I totally agree, and that's why I like this conversation with you because, I mean, you're not just uh, making stuff up. This is science. This is back tough data uh, of what we're living in right now, and and as we're trying to find our way, and it's it's really it's daunting for a parent. It really is, especially if you're struggling struggling with your own you know, sort of unanswered um, addictions, whatever it might be. Like, I mean, I, you know, I'm no different than anybody else. When I'm waiting in a doctor's office or whatever, I scroll Instagram or Twitter and find out what's happening in the world, right? But I, I no longer bring a book with me. And it's like, what is going on? I just bring a book with me. So and it is... Sorry, I was going to say, speaking of science, it's really important to understand there is a counter kind of science to regulation, um, uh, which is this concept of self-regulation, like, oh, you know, teenagers can need to just figure it out. You know, we can't impose restrictions. Um, and getting back to the teenage brain and what we know about it, um, it is very hard, to your point, Tamara, to, for adults to self-regulate, right, in the doctor's office, in the um, bus stop. So to expect young people to do it without our guidance, help and our limits is not realistic. But there is science of self-regulation and, and experts pushing it. And it is be often driven by the tech industry themselves. Uh, Just like fat was the bad person. Um, and it was really driven by an industry that was pushing, you know, the carbs and sugar. So uh, we just always have to be careful of good science um, and where it's coming from, too. Oh, that's so interesting. I never thought about it that way before, but that makes sense. Yes, of course. So let's talk about some some house rules or some healthy habits that we can we can work on with our with our kids, our family. Maybe it's your husband or your wife that needs some attention to because I would think that it all really applies to all of us. We're talking about kids mostly here, but I'm sure that some of your um, suggestions will work for um, for all of us. So what are some healthy habits? Yeah. So it's just like sugar, I think. Um, and I think there's going to be a, a list of house rules in the show notes too, but um, some really simple things. So uh, some screen free areas of your home. So pick the kitchen table. For me, it's kitchen table, dining room table, the car, um, including if you're carpooling friends um, and it works really well. The kids listen if you're giving them a ride. Um, some screen free times. So uh, dinner time, uh, bedtime, ideally, it's two hours before I don't know very many teenagers who do that. Um, but limiting it before bed using blue light glasses, if you really need to do homework, um, digital days off or digital times off shutting the Wi Fi off. Um, you know, in our house, the Wi Fi is off by 10 o'clock. That was really hard for my older son, who's a night owl and is off to university. Um, but he had to find his own workaround and get his own modem. Um, so the Wi-Fi shuts off. Sometimes you need to literally uh, buy those lock boxes. And I've fallen into times where it was really hard for me to self-regulate. And I have that lock box where I lock my phone in and it opens up in the morning. Uh, so those are some common sense house rules. But we got to remember, it's like sugar. We have to be repetitive. Um, you can always reset. People ask me, is it too late? Um, and in the tech solution, I talk about a six step plan to reset your tech diet or your family's tech diet. Um, so it's never too late. Um, you know, we just like food and diet and sugar, we are always it's a constant calibration. Uh, so there's so many um, tips and tools that we need to rely on. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, I, I, I was wondering, you know, maybe somebody's listening and they think, OK, well, you know, Shimmy's probably perfect and her kids are probably perfect with their social media and their electronics and that I I know you're shaking your head. No, because I I I think that sometimes we think when we hear these experts, it's not a struggle for them. It's not a but it is a struggle, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a story or a saying in research. Uh, research is me search. Uh, we tend to research and get interested in the things to help ourselves. Um, and that's what I did with the dolphin parent. I had three little kids, and I was overwhelmed with this modern day parenting and struggles and scheduling and uh, all of it. Um, and the same with tech. So definitely not perfect. Um, I have my oldest son has ADHD and some learning differences. My daughter has quite significant dyslexia. I have a dyslexia and ADD. We need tech and great. Like it's so great for us. My calendars, my notifications, Google read and write for my daughter. Um, but also, you know, uh, more prone to some of the, the uh, dopamine driven attention issues, especially. So I would say tech is the number one issue in my household. Um, I deal with it every day. I have to, I, I fluctuate from being a jellyfish when I'm tired and just giving up um, and being a shark when I'm all angry and fired up. Um, and if I can manage and sleep and take care of myself, I may be more that collaborative uh, dolphin, that firm and flexible, adaptable, curious, collaborative style. I love it, Shimmy. And I love your honesty about it, too, because it you, it sounds just like my house, too. So this is a good thing. And, you know, what is do you have any thoughts on when a child should get a phone? Like, do you have, I mean, and I'm not holding you to this. This is just, you, you know, your own experience, your lived experience opinion on it. Yeah. So in the house rules list, there's um, very clear directive. Don't give your child a phone. Um, let them borrow yours, um, you know, because unless they can afford it and pay for it, um, you want to keep um, some authority over it. So you let them borrow yours, just like you let them borrow your car. And that when they, when time is right, that's why you have the passwords, you manage, you help guide them towards, um, you know, healthy use of it. And you can take it back because it's not theirs, it's yours. Um, so that's that would be my first overall answer. And then, of course, as they get older, we want to scaffold. Um, so with my older kids, um, they start paying for some of their data plans and then they have more freedom. Uh, but I talk about it in the book. It's like the keys to a car. We don't just hand them over. We give them lessons and we take them on the local roads before the highways. So same with te the phone. Let them try text messaging. Let them try family, carpool, chat, homework. That's the local roads. Before they get onto a social media highway, watch them on the highway. And guess what? You might have to pull them back. Um, which I've had to do with my own kids because it is a really big, um, scary highway out there. So it's this constant um, push and pull. Um, but we have to be with them in their virtual worlds as much as their real worlds. Mm. Great advice, Shimmy. OK, the book is called The Tech Solution by Dr. Shimmy Kang. You can find Dr. Kang, well, everywhere uh, at drshimmykang.com or on Instagram and all the other socials at Dr. Shimmy Kang. Shimmy, thank you so, so much. It's been great. Thank you, Tamara, for all your amazing work and advocacy for families everywhere and your incredible team for this podcast that I think I know helps so many people in so many ways. Oh, that's so nice, Shimmy. Thank you. And here at TELUS, we also have TELUS Wise, our free digital literacy education program. And you can visit telus.com slash wise for more information and resources. Thanks for listening to another episode of TELUS Talks with Tamara Taggart. Be sure to subscribe so you can join us every Tuesday for another conversation. You can also check out our website, telus.com slash podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at TELUS Talks. 